how's it going everybody thanks for tuning in now before I begin I want to thank each and every one of you who has subscribed so far just want to say thank you now today's video is going to be all about the first settings I would change if I had just picked up my Samsung Galaxy device now I have the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra here and even though it's the S21 Ultra a lot of these settings apply to other Samsung phones as well so especially if you've picked up a Galaxy device especially an S series device in the past couple of years or even if you just picked up the new S22 line of phones a lot of these settings are going to be the same so even if you don't have the exact same device as me uh, a lot of this information will still apply to you so let's get into it so the first thing I would actually change is here in the I think it's called the quick panel the first thing I would toggle on is this Dolby Atmos now that's for your sound and the reason why I would make sure that this is turned on is because everything is just going to sound a lot better a lot richer with the Dolby Atmos turned on the next thing I would change and these this is all optional you don't have to change things these but is the this is the processing speed now by default I believe it'll be on the optimized setting so if you want the best like battery to performance ratio I would just leave it on optimized I like to keep it on high because it just makes the processor a little faster now you're not going to notice it in like everything but according to Samsung the phone will be faster if you have it on this set there's also a maximum setting which Samsung only recommends for short amount of time um, I usually don't have it on that setting I just leave it on high and it's been good for me so far okay so once you're done with that I would come over to my settings now once you're in the settings app I would go to display I would make sure that adaptive smooth motion is turned on so what this is going to do is make sure that 120 Hertz is turned on on your phone so scrolling and everything is going to be a lot smoother this does take up more battery so just be aware so the next setting is all about screen resolution so if you come down here see the option for screen resolution here now by default I think Samsung leaves it on full HD which is 1080p now if you're on a Galaxy S21 or S21 Plus or an S22 or S22 Plus you won't have this setting because your phone your display is 1080p and you can't change it now if you have one of the phones that you can change the screen resolution on um, I would change it to the maximum resolution Samsung says that this wastes more battery but I've seen tests on YouTube where it doesn't really matter which setting it's on the battery drains more or less the same you know you paid a lot of money for your phone and you might as well get the most benefit out of it so I have mine set to quad HD so once that's set I would then go into screen mode and there's two options some of the older models had more options but by default it's usually on vivid or I think on the older phones like the S9, S8 it was called adaptive but you could either leave it on vivid and play with this white balance to get the color you like but what I do is I leave it on the natural color setting I find for most purposes the natural is just more true to life and it's easier on the eyes the vivid is more saturated it's more punchy but it's not very true to life I find so I like it on natural but you can play around with that see which one you like okay the next thing I would do is come to full screen apps and if you click on camera cutout you have a list of all these apps here now by default the app may not take up the whole screen but if you want the app to fill up your whole display like the full size of the display you can change that here now we're back in the settings app now I'm going to scroll down a bit and I'm going to go into advanced features I'm going to choose labs here and I'm going to make sure that multi window for all apps is turned on once you turn this on you can do a split screen 
and by split screen I mean this, you'll be able to do split screen with all your apps. And so far every app I've tested it with has worked fine, even though Samsung gives you a warning that some apps may not work properly. I haven't run into any issues so far. Once that's done, I would come here to battery and device care. I would click on battery and I would go into more battery settings and you can choose how you want your battery um, display status up here to be. So I think by default, I could be wrong, it doesn't show the percentage, so you can turn it on here so it shows the percentage. There's also more settings, like if you like playing around with the always on display, you can turn this on, it'll show the charging on information even when your phone screen is turned off, like it'll show it on the, it'll show it on the always on display. And here, you can choose whether you want fast charging enabled, super fast charging, fast wireless charging, and there's an also an option here for protecting your battery. So if you turn this option on, I have it off. Sometimes I have this on, but right now I have it off. But what this does is it maxes out your battery charge to 85% and it won't charge past that. And apparently that's good for your battery because it's not good to leave your battery on the charger like once it's fully charged. Okay, next thing I would change, I would go into this the display again and scroll down and I would choose the type of navigation bar I want. Now I have I have it set to gestures. If you like having navigation buttons, you can turn it on. And now if you can see down here, we have navigation buttons. So that's an option if you want buttons. Um, I don't use navigation buttons, I use the gestures. So once that's done, I would set up my edge panel. Um, I have mine right here. So it's kind of just like a quick way of accessing certain apps and uh, certain tools, certain features that your phone will have. And there's actually a lot of different options you have. You can use it just for apps. You can use your tools, like you can have a compass, a ruler, um, you can have different like uh, selection features, contacts, people. You can play around with this and uh, set this up. And you can also play around with what color you want the handle to be, whether you want the handle to show or not. Like right now, I have it on, like I had it on invisible, but I'm not sure if you could see it, maybe if I change the color. There we go. If you see a red bar there, the size is still big. You can increase the size of the bar, so now it's bigger. If you, you could probably see it better now. But you could play around with that. I usually have it set very small. I don't need to see it, I just remember where it is. Okay, so once you have that figured out, Next, I would go into lock screen. So in this screen, we choose the screen lock type that we want. And you have an option for swipe, pattern, pin, password. And this is also where you can store your fingerprints and set up the fingerprint scanner if you want that to be your, your lock screen type. Okay, the next thing I would do is make sure the software is up to date. You could either do this, you could probably want to do this at the beginning actually, like before you do anything else. Usually when you buy a phone brand new, it'll install the latest software updates, but sometimes it doesn't. So you can come here and check whether you have the latest software update installed. Now next we're going to customize our home screen. Then I would change the home screen grid. So here you can just choose how many apps you want to be able to put on your home screen, how many like rows of apps and amounts of apps uh, you want on your home screen. You can change that here. 
I have it set to the default, with it, which is 4x5. And I just do that because I think it looks the best. I think the other ones just look too cluttered. Uh, you can choose your folder. Um, folders are right here. Like, for example, I have my apps groups, like Google here. So you can change how many apps you want in your folders. And uh, you can play around with that. And also, I would make sure that I have rotate to landscape mode turned on. And also, I would turn on this option here, swipe down for notification panel. So what this does is you can swipe down anywhere on your phone and it'll bring down the notification panel. And also, one more thing I forgot to show you is, whoops, setting your app brightness. So if you go into the settings for your brightness panel right there, you can either set it to adaptive brightness or you could have it set to manual. Now I thought I had it set to manual, which is what I usually have it set to, but it was set to adaptive. I guess I probably set it and just forgot to change it. So you can change that option there. You can also go down here, um, I'm back in the settings app. You can go into the themes section And here I can change my wallpapers or download wallpapers. I can download icon packs and I can download whole themes, which means it'll give you like a new wallpaper. Uh, it'll change the icons, everything. So there's lots of options for customization. And also when you're going advanced features, I would click on the side key and here you can change what the side key does. I have it to quick launch camera with a double press and I also have it set to power off when I press and hold. So I don't remember exactly what the default was but I remember I had to change at least one of these settings to what I like or if you don't want to then don't do it. Next is motion and gestures. Now this is all the different motions and gestures, basically, hence the name, that Samsung gives you. Um, I leave some of these on, some of these off. Um, like I like double tap to turn on screen, like when your screen's off. You can go through these and you, know, you can turn on the ones you like or turn off the ones you don't like. This is all a matter of preference. Now one of the first things you probably want to do is set your ringtone. So, if I go into sounds and vibrations, ringtones, I can either add my own ringtone or I could go through the list and pick a ringtone that I like. I can also change notification sounds like, for example, if I get a text message, I can change the sound. And there's just all different types of settings here related to like uh, call sounds or whether you want your, your phone to vibrate in a specific pattern. And that's it guys. Thanks for tuning in. Give the video a like if it helped you out. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. It would really help this channel out. And hopefully I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.